you got a greasy mess like this on your Ninja 250, I'm gonna show you how to fix it. Hello, my friends, and welcome to Tom's Tinkering and Adventures. So, um, I've uh, got this Ninja 250 that I did a project on. I'll put a link to it uh, over here. And uh, I sold this to a friend of mine. Got a pretty good deal on it. Still put a little bit of money in the bank, a little bit for me, and a great deal for them, I believe. And I said, before I Send it out of my garage, I want to take care of one last issue, so that's why it's still hanging around here. I've been waiting on parts. Now, um, if you watch my other video, I think I mentioned that I've worked on a lot of these. These are one of my favorite little bikes to uh, pick up because I usually find them at a fair deal and turn them around at a fair deal and get new riders started. In fact, uh, the friend I'm selling it to, it's going to be for his daughter, first bike, and uh, it's a smart choice. It's a good little machine. They're reliable, parts are everywhere for them, and as long as it's running, it's still going to be worth something. And uh, I think they're not a bad looking machine. They're kind of dated, of course. This has uh, been uh, the same basic model from the late 80s, early 90s, up to 2007, and they updated it a little bit, but uh, it's still a good little machine. But anyway, on the uh, several that I have worked on, a lot of them have had oil leaks. And uh, you'll see it like down here in the fairing. That's where I'm at here on the left-hand side. If you see a lot of oil down there or if you park it and you see oil underneath it, you know, disregard those old greasy uh, cardboard chunks. Those are just from everything I'm working on here. But uh, you'll see when I pull this off. I've, I actually cleaned this up when I worked on the bike. And I did notice the oil there, but uh, after I rode it a few times, I noticed more. So that is a symptom of the shift shaft seal leaking i'll show you the part in a minute here but uh we're going to get started on fixing this problem and it's a pretty easy fix i think any mechanic with a basic hand tool should be able to knock it out so first thing we got to do is take off this lower cowling so it's going to be these screws and there's one on the front so there's three on the side one on the front I'll get that off and we'll come right back. Okay, we removed that lower cowling. And there you can see the oil leaking in there. And you probably get a better view of all the greasy goodness down in there. Your next step is you're gonna to wanna to remove this uh, chain cover. So what I like to do is, I like to mark where the split is on this uh, shifter. I use a Sharpie marker, you can also use a uh, center punch and put a little punch mark there but that'll just make sure that your shifter is still at the same alignment because this thing is splined so you can move it this way or this way to move the shifter up or down since I'm pretty happy with where it's at I'm leaving it there so that's how I mark it and that is a 10 millimeter and you generally have to remove it entirely because the uh, shaft has a uh, groove in it where this bolt goes. So even if you just loosen this pinch bolt, it won't come out. Now, sometimes these things will fight you coming off too. So you may have to uh, get behind it a little bit with a screwdriver, but this one looks like it's coming off okay in there. Hopefully, Here, let me bring you in and show you. You can see where that goes. And the bolt goes in there like that. So even if you loosen it, this won't come off. Already getting dirty. And now we have, what, one, two, three. Maybe just three to remove that. Let's see if we can't get that off. And I'm gonna wanna tighten up those straps on here a little bit more. It looks like, there we go. Yeah, sometimes these can fight you coming off too because they have a little locator pins on them. Let me stripe this bike down more. I'm not liking the way it's moving. Now 
Now you can attribute some of that to that shift shaft, but most of that's probably from the chain because the shift shaft goes right through here. But you can definitely see all the oil and grease down in there. So now we have to uh, clean that up so we can get in there. And it looks like we might have to remove this uh, water pump as well. I don't remember having to do that, but uh, it looks like we do. It's been a minute since I've done this. First thing you want to do is remove the uh, drain bolt right here. Now be aware when you remove that, the coolant's not going to come out until you crack open the radiator cap. And when you do, the fluid's going to want to shoot almost straight out. So if you have two people, it's kind of nice because the radiator fill cap is up over the top of that. But uh, what I did is I just kind of held this bucket, reached over and opened it and you'll let that drain. And then we have to remove the mounting bolts here for the water pump. And we got to remove this coolant line and that coolant line there. And once you loosen up this, uh, clamp up here there is a mount bolt down here that you can loosen up already got that one loose and then this whole water pipe will come right out of this uh, water pump and there you go and if I remember correctly I think I might be able to just leave this one hooked up and we can just swing it out of the way. We'll, we'll uh, try it here in just a second. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loosen up uh, one, two, one, two, three, four mount bolts for this water pump. Okay, as has happened uh, many times in this thing that we call life here, I have made another error, but that's okay. You know, I'm working without the manual here. I'm just going off of memory, so please read the freaking manual but what you do need to do is you do need to get up in here disconnect the upper clamp for this there is a mount bolt right there on the case you need to take off and then your water pump let me get you in here a little bit better your water pump comes in half, basically. This is the outer housing. We'll remove this. And now you have the actual one and two mount bolts that should pull this whole housing out. Let's see if I'm right now. I've been wrong so many times here so far today. Yeah, let's see, that's a little wire attachment there. There's another one on this one covered in grease. Yeah, it's unfortunate you have to pull all this because the seal is back behind there and you can't even see it. It's so covered in grease. There we go. Now this thing is loose and this is basically just splined into here. Let me see if I can get you looking at this. It's working on stuff and doing YouTube videos at the same time it adds a whole nother level of difficulty to working on things. There we go. Plus it makes me realize how much I'm not reading the freaking manual. And that's why I tell you all to do it, you know, do as I say, not as I do. Just takes a little bit of little bit of fiddling to get off. You know, you gotta play against the, the devil down in Georgia. You know, that's a kind of stupid fiddle pun, but what else are you gonna do? Talk about a fiddler crab? It's moving. Okay. And that's kind of why I had it strapped the way I did. I wanted it to lean that way so we didn't spill as much oil. 
I knew it would spill a little bit. But there you have it. Hopefully you can see inside of there. Let me, let me see if I can get a light on it and show you. Where's the light? There we go. There's a spline in there that drives that water pump. So when you put it back in, you gotta make sure that's engaged. And this seal is all that really separates the two. But now, somewhere amongst all that muck and gunk is that leaking seal. So I'm gonna clean that up and we'll come back and I'll kind of show you because you can't see it now, it's covered in garbage. Okay, there's our new seal. And the thing I hate about little parts like this is this part costs, let's say $5, but in order to get it, you gotta pay $7 shipping or whatever. Of course, no local places ever carry them. So if you go to a local place, they have to order it. So you have to drive in have them order it and then go and pick it up. So it just about makes as much sense to order it online, which is the uh, sad state of the world today. Now, this looks a little bit better in here maybe, huh? And you can see that seal now, it's way in there. How are we gonna get that out? Well, I'm gonna use an old trick. And what we're going to do is, we're going to drill a small hole I'm going to try to drill a small hole very carefully on the outside metal edge of this seal. And then I am going to hopefully install one of these screws in there. So you get the small hole, put that screw in there, and then pull it out with the pliers. So I'm going to get the hole drilled and install the screw. And then you can watch me either succeed or fail at this. I mean, what you want to try to do is maybe Drill a hole down in the bottom and one on the top if you can. If you can get two screws in there, you can double your success rate, of course. So there's not a whole lot of room, but that's, uh, that's pretty much the time-tested uh, way to get seals like this out, because it's pressed in from the outside, so there's no real way you have to uh, take the entire engine apart to push it out from the inside. And once we go to pressing it back in, that's gonna be a whole nother story of uh, garage innovation so I'll show you that too and I don't know how many of y'all can notice this but uh, yeah big mistake on just using the sharpie marker on that because when I cleaned it took that right off so I've got a screw kind of threaded in there and we will try to pull it out hopefully I can work around the camera no kind of just blocking it but um, many times when you do this you uh, have a couple of failures, so I would be surprised if it pops out immediately, especially since I'm on camera now. Yeah, and that's what happens is your screw pulls out. So we're gonna have to try drilling a couple other holes around here and hope for the best, but that's the idea. Sometimes you don't always succeed and you have to break out a bigger, bigger hammer. So, I got a hammer. I drilled a couple holes, and uh, it's really hard to drill on this one because it's so small. So, you come in at an angle, and then the drill kind of skates off of that metal surface and goes into the rubber against the seal here. So, you could try that. And, like I said, I've had success, and it works pretty good on much bigger um, seals like this. Uh, but sometimes it doesn't always work. Now I have this um, cotter pin pulling tool here, which has a really neat curve to it. So sometimes you can jam that in where the, where the holes are and twist it. And that'll help pull it out. Now, off camera, I also tapped on the outside edge of this seal with a with a screwdriver here to kind of get behind it and push it in. So then that lo um, loosened up the bond around the outside. So you just have to get creative, sometimes uh, maybe cr even creative with some new words, but uh, it will come out. Yeah, you can see where I beat that side in there with the screwdriver. And inside of there, you can see a little bit of the seal still in there. If I can get that out, a pick would work better, but 
And now I'm gonna clean up the inside of this whole area with some clean rags and uh, we'll get ready to install the new seal. All right, once you got the whole area cleaned up, I like to put a little bit of oil or grease on the, grease the shaft. That's right. Everything's a little bit better with lube. And I also put a little bit of oil or whatever on the seal here because you gotta get it to slide in there. So you wanna very carefully slide it over here so you don't damage it. Make sure you clean this, clean the shaft really well. <laughs> All these innuendos. Now, here's where it gets tricky because you need something to try to squarely drive that thing in there. Now, I just happen to have some bits and pieces laying around. I got this uh, spacer and uh, that. Doesn't look like they're the same diameter. So that is gonna kinda work to get it started. And then once it gets in there, then I'm gonna have an issue. But let's see if we can't get it to start squarely. You wanna take it nice and slow and keep an eye on it. Looking good so far. I'm gonna back you up here because I don't wanna hit the screen. Now the problem with using this one to, to drive it in is that this is a bigger diameter than the uh, outside of this, so I can only get it till it's flush. And if you remember, this thing was set back a ways. So now we're running into, now we're running into uh, an issue where we have to get it the rest of the way. So I have to see if I can find something with a little bit smaller diameter maybe. So let me take a look what I have that's gonna fit around there, but uh, I'm sure I'll find something. Give me a few minutes. All right, let's see if this uh, contraption's gonna work here. So I found a washer that's the same outside diameter as, as that seal is. I had to do a little bit of work on the inside of it to get it to fit over this. Now I have another piece of pipe that should fit there. And is this one gonna drive that one? Actually, I might have to find another small piece of pipe to drive that one on there. So let's see what I can find. Ooh, this is a pain in the butt. But I imagine if you took this into a dealer, it's gonna cost you, so this is kinda worth it. Is it? You have to determine if it's worth it to you. Not everyone likes to do this kind of stuff, but I do. Continuing on here, we got a bigger washer. Now this, now let's see what we can do. And it's in there. I have to pick that out with a magnet probably. Now the reason I went to so much trouble to try to get something that matched the outside diameter is you don't want to drive, like let's say I use this. You don't want to drive on the center of the seal because that's rubber. It's got a metal outside that fits in to this engine case and then the rubber goes around here. So if you, if you just use this, it's gonna drive against the rubber and it probably is gonna split that brand new seal. So that's why I went to all the pain in the ass trouble to uh, find this washer that was the same outside diameter. And then I drilled out the center and then messed with it a little bit with the file still even at that. And you can see I didn't do an amazing job, but the important part is that the outside diameter Oops, now it rolled way down over there. So we have that thing driven in there and now we just need to start putting stuff back together. So I've cleaned all these parts, the uh, two halves of the water pump and that cover. So we need to reassemble. Okay, when you reinstall this water pump, make sure that you've got this engaged. Remember I showed you that, um, it's like a, piece that stuck out and then you get the fork on here. So you'll know if it won't push in, it's not engaged and then you can feel this thing. So now we gotta put the uh, two mount bolts back in and start hooking up everything else. So you gotta put this back up in the hose up here. Make sure you put the hose clamp on it as well. 
And you get a little bit of play right here if you look. Let me get this on here. Now there's four bolts. Remember I mistakenly said those were the mounting bolts, but that's what splits the uh, water pump in half. And one of them is longer, and the longer one goes in here. Get all those installed. I don't like to tighten stuff with this. I just like to drive it down and then, of course, you know, you uh, can look up the torque specs or if you're a clown like me, then you'll just use the uh, German Guten Tight Torque and then we'll install this pipe back on here. Be careful for that uh, seal there. Of course, a uh, good mechanic would replace that, but there you have it, so. Okay, at this point, what you wanna do is make sure that you've double and triple checked everything, your uh, clamps, your little mounting bolts, um, all these goodies. And then uh, check your oil, because remember uh, if, a good time to do this is when you're doing an oil change, so you ain't gonna worry about it, but uh, we did lose a little bit of oil, so make sure you check your oil, top off your coolant, and um, you're not gonna be able to get all the coolant in at once because the system has to uh, cycle through and purge. So add some coolant and then fire it up and run it, and run it for a good while. Check for leaks everywhere that you remove stuff. Check for leaks at the hose junctions here where uh, I showed you that seal. There's another one down here, and then where we split the water pump in half, and of course, in our area around the shift shaft there. And I don't see any oil, which is a good thing. And then double check everything and put her back together. And now you know why when you uh, take your motorcycle in for service to replace a $5 part, it ends up costing you $150 or $200 because that $5 part might be buried behind a whole bunch of other stuff that you have to remove. So this is a uh, not a super in-depth, but it does take a little bit of time. Yeah, while I was working on it, I noticed that this turn signal was broken, so I put a little bit of epoxy on it. And that's about it. She's back in one piece and ready to go to her new owner. I'm happy um, that I was able to turn it around and get it to a new rider. And now you see, like I said, why a $5 part can turn into a $150 repair. And it's the same thing on cars too, you know, say a, a rear main seal, oh my God. <laughs> Sometimes you're, you're better off just dealing with a little bit of an oil leak, but uh, that can lead to dangerous issues. Like this one was leaking right on the exhaust pipe, so. If you're liking what I'm putting out here, give me that thumbs up, leave a comment down below, and hit that subscribe button, all that good YouTube stuff. I dig it, you dig it, we dig it all together. Thank you very much for watching. Get out there and find your adventure. Adios.